And welcome to the Alouettes Flight Deck, a podcast dedicated to Montreal Alouettes football. I'm Tim Capper. You can find me on Twitter at Repack. That's R E P P A C T. And I'm Cliffy D. You can also find me on Twitter, but at Cliffy D. And this episode of the Alouettes Flight Deck is presented by our good friends over at Sport Buff, where right now, if you head over and use the promo code Flight Deck 10, you will save 10% off your entire order. Head on over to www.sportbuffshop.com, order up some new merch, save some money, and support local commerce. And we are all over the internet. Many places you can find us. Best place to check out our archive over at www.alouettesflightdeck.ca. Twitter account is at uh, alouettesfldeck. Facebook, just look for Alouettes Flight Deck Pod. Instagram over at Alouette's Flight Deck, and YouTube over at youtube.com slash Alouette's Flight Deck. And also, it may be the eighth season premiere, but you can still head over to the Alouette's Flight Deck merch shop, pick up your, your merch right now so you can rep all the way through the preseason, through the season itself. We're hoping to have some stuff pop up very, very shortly on some new some new uh, designs. But head over to teespring.com slash stores slash Al's Flight Deck. So as I mentioned before, Acliff, welcome to rest... Oh, sorry. Welcome to the eighth season premiere. We're back. <laughs> Eight ball corner pocket, as our, our friend Kenny Stafford would say on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Yes. Season eight. Yes, I mean, that's fantastic. I mean, the, I'm I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled that we can keep doing this thing. You and I talking football as as it should be. It's uh, it was good to take a little break. Uh, you know, I think uh, you know, help recharge the batteries, kind of get focused. Uh, I mean, we, you know, still keeping tabs on what the Alouettes are doing and all that. But uh, you know, I'm I'm glad we took a you know a bit of a breather, and uh, now we're back. You know, it, it won't be quite the frequency as it was, as it normally is in our off season. But uh, we, I, you and I, I think we're definitely looking forward to getting back to it, getting back to talking football, CFL football, talking about the Alouettes and what's going on with them and just getting this party going again. Yeah, exactly. And we, again, like Cliff mentioned, uh, we're going to be in our off season mode. So we're looking to have shows potentially once every two to three weeks. I think three weeks probably will be the maximum. Uh, but stay tuned to all of our socials for, for more information. Um, but yeah, and make sure and make sure you subscribe, folks. It, however you listen to podcasts, best way to do it, get subscribed, you get notified notified every time a new episode of the flight deck drops so whether you listen on uh, apple podcast or spotify or iHeartRadio, or even if you're subscribed to the youtube channel which if you are thank you so much for that mm-hmm. i mean however you want to li- listen to the podcast there's millions of ways to do it make sure you're subscribed i think that's the best way to know when the next episode of the elowitz flight deck will come out and that way you're in the loop folks simple as that exactly um uh, you know it now probably is the the best time to to start a new season. You know we are currently in the the uh, uh, the allowed tampering period. It's so weird to have this thing, man. <laughs> the, the, you know you, where you can tamper, you can talk to these free agents and and potentially sign them. I and mean, a lot of stuff is breaking already. Obviously, whether it be you know uh, in. Uh, uh, for here in Montreal or across the uh, across the rest of the CFL, um, free agency starts next week officially. Um, and luckily, I mean it, it, it's a, it's a good and bad currently for Montreal. But I mean it's you know there are pieces still that are current free agents that are being signed. They, you know, they, they re-upped with the Alouettes uh, prior to them going to free agency, and we're happy to have them back. And we're going to go over them here and and. You know, and then I said we'll take the, take the rest of the show from there because we, we got a lot of talk about obviously this episode. Um, so the first one that was actually announced by the team, which was a couple of weeks ago, Cliff. Uh, you know, probably one of the best ways to start it off is to find out that Wesley Sutton is now back with the Alouettes. Yeah, uh, it, it's so funny because he had quite the he had quite the season last year. Uh, there were a couple times where he just kind of looked a little bit lost, like kind of out of position where he was. But then he found his groove. And once he did, oh boy, did we find a, that was, that was a great find. Mm -hmm. This was a young man that, 
you know, I think it was, I think it just came down to him trying to find his way. And once he did, we knew he was going to be fine. It, it, it took a little while, but he, he got his act together. And I, I'm very happy that the Alouettes saw that. They saw the value in him. And being, being able to retain his services, I think, is going to be great. Because uh, one person I think about with this is Darius Pickett, who is actually a pending free agent. Mm-hmm. Uh when he was when the Alouettes initially brought him in in 2021, he was kind of lost in the shuffle a little bit. Like he was trying to find his way. He switched positions and ended up having an outstanding year last year, to the point where I think he will get paid when before this free agency period, this tampering period is over. I, I got a feeling he's gonna, he's probably getting in some pretty decent offers, and I'm pretty sure if it's not with Montreal, then he'll he'll sign with somebody, and someone's gonna pay him very handsomely. So, I think the same thing could, was gonna come about with Wesley Sutton too. Uh, you know, he he got his act together. He he found his way here in Montreal. Had a stellar season. Ended up having a pretty stellar season. And obviously, Danny Machocha realized that and decided, okay, this this is a, the kind of guy I got to keep on in in the in the lineup. Like this is a member of the secondary that needs to get a chance to shine again. And now he has got that. So kudos to Wesley for doing what needed to be done and we're thrilled to have him back in 2023 yep and just so everybody knows how uh, he was he was signed to a new two-year deal with the alouettes and and, and i said uh, on twitter you know with the whole the whole situation that's go- currently going on which again which we'll be talking about um i'm curious it's keeping track of how many years that these players sign with the Alouettes, I think will be a very telling story. Um, actually, across the CFL too, I mean, but in general, specific with the Alouettes. So two years, hey, I'm happy with having him back for two years, Cliff. I really am. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, second of all, we got uh, home, some homegrown talent uh, who, re- who re-upped with the Alouettes, uh, Regis Sibasu. Um, I, I, he was signed to a, a new one-year deal. Uh, I mean, uh, obviously, Quebecers know Regis when it comes to... Uh, what he is for the Alouettes franchise, and but but still, it's he did pay an integral part last year. Maybe you never know; he will probably get into a little bit more this year, especially with uh, you know whatever whatever he is given to do. Um, but a new one year deal for for Regis. Yeah, definitely a, a very solid contributor on special teams. Uh, as you said, Quebec born player, so he 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 knows what it takes to play in Montreal. He's uh, played for Danny Machocha at the uh, Université de Montréal. And obviously, the, the talent, as I say, you can't hide talent. And I think that uh, getting a chance to get reinvented in this offense is definitely a, a possibility for this receiver. But uh, just for his special teams work alone, definitely deserves a, a bring back. And I'm, I'm glad to see that Regis is getting a chance, going to get another chance to shine yet again. Yep. Uh, next of all, uh, what do we call him? Pick six, Beverett? I mean, he, he was the guy who was the integral part in the Alouettes knocking off the Edmonton Edmonton, Edmonton Elks in uh, Edmonton er, uh, earlier in 2022. But uh, Tyrese was signed. They didn't announce. Did you happen to see how many years he was he was signed for? Because they didn't actually mention it in the press release. I'm going to say a year, but uh, I could be wrong. Well, they yeah, they didn't. Uh, I, I didn't see it either. But uh, the LOS were very clever as far as how announcing it, because uh, what they've been trying to do now to, I guess, get people excited about any potential signings is to make you guess who signed with the team. And what they did was they posted uh, on their Twitter account a picture of a tie and then a uh, Reese's peanut butter cup package with, uh, you know, re- kind of redesigned with the word Alouettes on it. They did a good job. Make- yeah. So like Ty Reese. OK, OK, we know who this is. So, yeah. So it's a good thing he wasn't in the U.S. then because it would have been Ty Reese's. Yes. Because yes, yes. people who don't know, Reese, Reese peanut butter cups in the U.S. are called Reese's. Yeah, and you only get two down in the states when you buy them. Like, whereas up here, it's Reese, and you uh, you get three. So yeah, you know, Canada rules. <laughs> <laughs> but but. integral part for for the defense last year, and it, it's uh, obviously going to be great to have him back. Let's not forget too a home run hitter. Like this guy puts the wood to people. And he, he, remember in the Eastern semifinal, I, I mean. You know what? We love Matthew Schultz. And even though he's a member of the Hamilton Tiger Cats, mm-hmm. he's still one of our guys. But man, Tyrese just leveled Schultz with a hellacious hit. I mean, and I, I felt bad because, like, you know, we got nothing but love for Schultz. But at the same time, like, uh, we're trying to win a playoff game here. And we, we're kind of glad to see uh, Tyrese come and uh, just, you know, he didn't hurt him. He didn't hurt Schultz. You know, he just knocked him kind of funny a little bit. So, but. That's the kind of impact player 
that uh, Tyrese Beverett is. And between that and the incredible pick six and some of the other great plays that he was a part of last year, I mean, this was this was definitely a no brainer to bring this guy back. And you know, as as far as trying to solidify that linebacking core, right there, I, I'm I'm curious to see if we can get him and uh, Brian Harlemana working together in tandem like that that's a dangerous duo right there mm-hmm. and if somehow uh, Darius Pickett can come back and just have all three of those guys on the field at the same time oh man that that's the good stuff right there exactly <laughs> and 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 no more than five days later the Alouettes uh announced the the re-signing of one of the most electrifying players uh the gentleman who really he should have won special teams player of the year. Uh, Alouettes are able to lock up uh, returner Chandler Worthy to a brand new two year deal. So exciting. So exciting to be able to bring back a CFL award nominee. Someone who, as you said, electrifying. I mean, that just just the start to describe Chandler Worthy. And I'm so excited to see what he's going to do in 2023. I, I, now that he knows that he's he's found a home here in Montreal. And I. Again, uh, it, it was it's crazy. It was crazy to think that last year the Alouettes at one point had both the Eastern and Western nominees for most outstanding <laughs> special teams player. I know, and unfortunately Chandler did not take it home. But the fact that he was nominated as Eastern, no, he was the Eastern nominee for this for this award, and lived up to the hype as far as I'm concerned. So to see him back in Alouettes blue and red, very exciting, folks. I mean that's. That's the kind of that's the kind of impact player you want on this team. That's the kind of guy who is going to turn a game on a dime if given the opportunity. So I'm excited. I'm excited to see Chandler back here in in Montreal in 2023. And then just the next day, the Alouettes are able to announce um, uh, <clears throat> somebody else on defense who is returning. Uh, the Alouettes announced that Raheem Wilson was also signed to a one year deal. Mm-hmm. Yep, very exciting to see uh, Raheem back as well. Uh, Slowed down by an injury towards the end of the season, unfortunately. But we were starting to see shades of the uh, the superstar that he was in Calgary. And that bodes extremely well for the secondary, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, if he can get past these injury issues that he had, and I got a feeling he will, I, I fully expect him to be a leader on this defense as, as someone who can really step up in the secondary and truly help guys along, uh, especially a guy like a Wesley Sutton or even a Mike Jones. Uh, if uh, he's back, uh, he's back with us in uh, 2023. I think Raheem Wilson and the feast lion who all had signed back in uh, December with the, with the Alouettes. I mean, that's, that's a deadly duo right there in the, in the secondary. So I'm, I'm definitely excited to see Raheem back in, uh, in the Alouettes colors this year. Yep, exactly. <clears throat> and last, but certainly not least the Alouettes announced just the other day, that the that they have brought back one of our <clears throat> three exciting Canadian wide receivers. The Alouettes did announce that they have re-signed Kayon Julian Grant to a new two-year contract. And it was also an, uh, it was also mentioned that uh, in, in a report that it looks like he is the first Alouette to actually have guaranteed money in his second year of his contract. So great to have KJG back, man. Because from what he did last year. He can just I, I can only imagine what he's going to do in 2023. Yeah, 2022, I think, was his coming out party, so to speak. Uh, he, he finally found a role within the offense. And my goodness, the <laughs> the way he was able to be a, an integral part of the offense. Absolutely outstanding. Along with guys like Tyson Philpott and Herjie Maiella, mm-hmm. like all three national receivers, all three just absolute deep threats if given the opportunity. All three guys can break plays open if 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 given the opportunity. So I, I'm beyond excited to know that uh, KGG is back with the Alouettes for next two years. And you talk about superstars that are on the rise. He, without question, is definitely going to be a name that in – this next itinerary of the Alouettes for the next two years, he is going to be a big part of this and he's going to make himself a household name. I can pretty much guarantee that it, you can't hide talent folks. And KGG has that in spades. Oh yeah, exactly. And you know what, Cliff, what better way to celebrate not only the eighth, uh, our eighth broadcast season, season premiere and to celebrate him signing with the team. We actually have him on as our interview this week. The first of hopefully many guests this year on the Alouette's Flight Deck podcast. Absolutely excited. Yeah. I mean, he secured the bag and now 
he can say that he is joining us here on the flight deck. So very excited. We are going to now speak with the one, the only, Kayon Julian Grant. On the line with us now is a gentleman we're proud to have on the flight deck for the very first time. He is uh, a recently re-signed player with the Montreal Alouettes for a new two-year contract. On the line with us now, wide receiver number 11, Kayon Julian Grant. Hey, KJG, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me, guys. I appreciate it. Um, uh, uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk about the, the contract stuff later because, again, we want to find out about you in itself. And, uh, you know, you as the player. Um, but it, uh, let me ask you one question. What is it when people talk about players coming in, you know, Canadian players coming in from U Sports specifically, do you find as being one of those players who came from a U Sport university in, at St. FX, do you find that you guys – um, you have to prove yourself more more than a Canadian coming from the United States. Oh, definitely, I would say so. And it just not even just a Canadian from the United States, just Americans coming from the states, because mm-hmm. just like the whole uh, notion of a NCAA school, you know, mm-hmm. being you, better or yeah. producing the better athletes. Do you think you sports schools, you sports <laughs> schools, get a bad rap? Uh, not. I wouldn't say a bad rap. I would just say, like historically, obviously. With the amount of D1 athletes, you're going to have a lot more pros. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, as so it's just like, sorry? Yeah, no, I was, was going to say, it, it makes sense. It makes sense what you're saying. I mean, it's, um, so as I said, well, we, we know you we went to St. FX. We know you came to the, you know, you were the uh, second round draft pick for the Owls. But uh, what got you into football, man? Uh, so growing up, I literally played soccer. And basketball for the most part and then like high school i was playing basketball and my dad played obviously played in the cfl as well and he would always tell me to just try football and i was like i don't really want to do it so then my uncle also pushed me to do it so i tried it in grade nine i played it all through high school but only through the high school season mm-hmm. and that was just one of those things that i was just like naturally good at and then i just grew to love the game over and like over time still bitter about basketball but it's life you know <laughs> <laughs> um why is it that you think uh bas- or football players and basketball like why do they go hand in hand so qu- so easily do you think uh there's just so much uh translation into uh like the, the different aspects of the game so like a crossover and being a receiver like getting a guy off of his line you know okay so it's just purely a comp- like a comp- like an athletic thing as far as uh even though yeah, even it's not it's, the same it's very, it's very similar okay that's fair all right uh what was it about uh, St. Effects that appealed to you when uh, when it came time to choose a school? Uh, so St. Effects was probably the most consistent recruiting me. I wasn't really like highly recruited out of high school. I think due, due to the fact I wasn't really focusing on football at the time, I was playing basketball. And then when I went on my visit, it just really just felt like home when I was there. I just really liked the vibe of the campus, the coaching staff. It felt like I could become a better player and man over there. All right. And when you did finally get your name called by the Alouettes, uh, during the combine process, uh, did, were you able to speak with the team beforehand or just speak to other teams? Or did you get a feeling that maybe it would be Montreal that would be calling your name? Uh, I had a slight feeling. But I, I, I had no idea who was, based off of my interviews at the combine, I, I had no idea who I could have went to. But I was happy nonetheless. <laughs> it's a blessing, right? Exactly. That's the thing. It's just as long as you get the call, that's the important thing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's all I was thinking. All right. And uh, talk about being uh, drafted by the Alouettes. Uh, in 2019, you were drafted, uh, only got uh, limited. Uh, you only saw the field of, uh, in a limited capacity. Uh, what was your first impression of coming to Montreal and actually being in a professional environment uh, versus being in, at CNFX? Uh, it was just the... Uh... Just treating it, just treating uh, football as a livelihood is like it now became my job. So it's like, and I, like you come into work each day, and you're basically battling for each other's job. Essentially, almost that's what, like the way I was thinking. So it's just like a overall higher level of uh, serious seriousness to be taken each day. Whereas university, it was like, yeah, this is fun, but let's let's try to win or whatnot. But it more so was like fun. <laughs> <laughs> and. The, you said your dad played uh, football in in the CFL and actually played for the Alouettes too. Did uh, how cool was that for him to be able to say that? Yes, I played for the Alouettes, and now my son plays for the Alouettes. No, no, he's he's always been ecstatic about that, and just like because he played with uh, the Argos and the Tiger Cats as well. So I feel like he's like there's a good chance one of them I'm going to be able to say it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, I mean, it, it could have been weird. I mean, especially if you got drafted by a team out in the West Coast, and it'd be just completely different altogether. But I guess it's all about staying East, I suppose, right? <laughs> yeah, and it's so crazy too, like staying East. So my dad stayed in the East of the first career, and then uh, he went to actually Acadia, and then I went to Saint Effects, which is pretty funny. <laughs> Wow. So, so you're both the uh, AUS guys. You're both uh, CFL East guys. I mean, this is, this is incredible. <laughs> I think yeah, destiny, right? <laughs> it was destiny that you were good to be a member of the Alouettes. Simple as that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it must have been. <laughs> All right. All right. So 2022, I would say is when people truly got to know who KGG was when you were in training camp last year, uh, what was it that, what did you feel had you, what steps did you feel you had to take in order for you to become more than just a guy on the roster, like to actually become a, a focal point of the offense? What do you think you had to do in order to convince this coaching staff that, hey, I belong in the conversation. I belong as a member of this uh, starting lineup. Uh, so after the 2021 season, I felt that a lot of my targets or catches, like they could have been a lot bigger plays and I felt like I was just nervous thinking like, okay I don't know if I'm going to see this ball again so I have to do something so I'll break a tackle and then I'll slip or something or step out of bounds and so there after that season I was like okay yeah, I really have to like just really hone out my craft and fine-tune everything so I started training a lot more weights and then receiver specific stuff with uh, Kamal Peterson and then I just came in with a different set of confidence and I just felt like I just felt like I had a chip on my shoulder essentially I uh, see that's what that's what it's about man you just got it's amazing what what motivates people. It's amazing that some people just take an opportunity like that and just use it to better themselves. And that's really what it comes down to, like playing in this league is, as you said, having that yeah. chip on your shoulder. It's something that motivates you in order to do better and just seeing what's in front of you and being able to go for it. I mean, that's that's yeah. really all you want. So, that's that's all that anybody wants. Exactly, just to do better and to be consistent at your level of play, like set a standard and either meet it or surpass it. Now, let's talk about uh, your first career touchdown, uh, a 70-yard bomb against the Saskatchewan yeah. Rough Riders. Take us through that, because that I remember seeing that, and my jaw dropped, because you were all alone, and you just took it to yeah. the house. <laughs> so, yeah, that was crazy. So, like, earlier in the game, we're running, like, our run plays and our other, like, routes where I wasn't the primary target, and then I... I kept beating my corner off. Like he was pressing me. And it, was, I don't know, it was weird to me because he was pressing at the field side and you don't really see, see that too much. So then I kept beating him off the line and I was just like jog after because let's say it's a run play. I'm not really getting the ball, just running him off or the ball was thrown to the other side already. So then uh, Mike, the receivers coach, he basically let Kahari know at the time and AC. And then me, I was telling Trevor about it because we were obviously on the sideline. We're looking at the iPad. And he's like, yo, if he presses you again, I'm just going to throw it to you. And lo and behold, he, he came and pressed. And just, Trevor just chucked it. <laughs> I almost thought I wasn't going to be able to get it. And I just I always keep a little juice left in the tank just in case. <laughs> you just find that reserve and just kick it into overdrive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Like a, a little nitrous move. Exactly. Like it's like Fast and Furious. Just that little hit the nitro yeah. and boom, off you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's, a, that's, exactly. a, that's a good analogy, Cliff. I like that. <laughs> yeah. There you go. New nickname. How's that? Nitro. Nitro. Okay. Yeah. That's, 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 I don't mind that one. That's pretty good. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's it's yours. Yours for the taking. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Overall, what did nitro you – how- I like it. Yeah. Overall, how did you feel about the 2022 season, Julian? I mean, uh, uh, you know, it's it it was a you know you, I think the Owls did had you know the worst turmoil, the worst stuff that the, uh, you as a player had to go through. The fans had that out they w- had seen uh, can, but I mean, it's uh, how, overall. How did you think that you that you and the team did in 2022? Uh, I feel like we did good, but. I, I know that team we had was was great, and the the thing that separates that is just consistency. So we can't have a game where defenses or defenses balling out, and then offense is it, and vice versa. Mm-hmm. Like we both like need to come together, and not to, not to mention like special teams too. Like if the three, all three aspects are there, or at least two out of the three, chances are you're going to win the game. So I feel like it was just we weren't consistent at all, like all the time, but. Yeah, overall, I felt like it was a bitter ending, obviously. I feel like I scratched the surface on what I could do just to prove myself. So hoping for a bigger role this year. And, yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, obviously, you know, as as much as we, you know, Cliff and I have been watching you guys play, you know, it was it's always great to see a, you know, a Canadian kid come in and make a huge name for himself. I mean, it's obviously a, a huge difference between the, you know, rookie you and obviously the 2020 you, um, you know, and that obviously made the team very happy in what you did. And then obviously, as we mentioned at the beginning of the, of the conversation that you came away with a, a new uh, two year contract, um, you know, avoiding any, you know, any chance of going anywhere for the next two years, but without giving anything away, what was, what was the process like? You know, it's you know, fans do not really know when it comes to players who go through contract negotiations, you know, free agent negotiations, et cetera, uh, just to be extended with a team. But can you give us a little bit of insight on what it's like for yourself or uh, to go through that this actual process to get re-signed? Uh, so for me, like, I want to say it was stressful, but it's like it's not stress. It's not stress in the same breath. Like, it's it, there are good problems where teams are wanting you. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm I'm looking to be employed. Stress, I would say, is like fighting for it. Mm-hmm. that shot. But uh, it was just like a lot of up and down emotions. It's like, okay, is this really the right decision for my future? And there could be two great options, the exact same deal, let's say, but one might be better. But in the end all, tell all, you will never know until the end. <laughs> like, right. Until it's all said and done. So it was just, okay, it would be like one hour. is like, okay, do I come back here? Like, oh, one hour here. It's like, well, it'll be kind of cool over here if I go over here too now. And then just back and forth, back and forth, and just a lot of praying with God for myself, uh, talking to family members, coaches, trainers, and then ultimately just sticking with my gut. Because ob- obviously, it was, I'm sure it's very different off too when you're when your dad was playing. I mean, you you know you are uh, one of the first players to be able to be to, to be able to sign under this new seven year collective bargaining agreement. So it's you know it's a lot different, I'm sure, from when he was playing too. Um, just out of curiosity, because yeah, exactly, uh, you're you are because we've heard some players they are, are, aren't represented by they f- represent themselves. But you you have an agent who was helping re- represent you with the team. Yes, I do have an agent. Okay, okay. Um, I, I mean, is it a, is it a fun process? I mean, as you said, there are ups and downs, and you love to be you know to be to be wanted by other teams. But um, you know, as you said, in the end, it's just just a matter of where. You, and we've heard players too, by the way, uh, Ken, where who would say, you know, I, I was offered more elsewhere, but you think that you think you have something special in Montreal, and you want to continue with what's being spe- what's special in Montreal. So exactly, like it was, let's say it was the exact same offers, and chances are, like with taxes or whatnot. I'll, come out with a bit more but mm-hmm. it's just like if it's somewhere you want to be you want to be there you know mm-hmm. now are you a player who who concentrates on setting milestones for yourself obviously i, I could ask you if it'd be a silly question if you did to, to to ask you if you kept your first ever touchdown ball that would be a dumb question obviously because i'm sure you have it <laughs> yeah. uh, actually i'm gonna ask so you it's, what, it's what, what, what i almost forgot it really <laughs> I, yeah so I, I like i like threw the ball after the touchdown, I was just like so overjoyed, and Trevor ran and grabbed it. <laughs> he brought it to me on the sideline. That's cool. So it was funny. That's cool. Where, so where is it right now? Did you keep it? Did you give it to your dad? Is it on the mantle? Where, where is it currently? Uh, I currently keep it with me like at all times. It's like in my car always, like in the back seat. I just keep it until like I get like a nice casing. <laughs> okay. You 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 know you can't use it as like an extra passenger in the. Uh... <laughs> In the uh, the carpool lanes, right? H O V. Sorry, I couldn't remember what it was called yeah. in Toronto. <laughs> that's funny, though. That's actually good. I like that too, Cliff. That is funny. <laughs> but I promise you, officer. Look, he's smiling at you. That's look my, at that. That's my baby. That's yeah. my baby. <laughs> Hey, exactly. You can't, you can't let that out of your sight. You know, KJG. If it if it, if it registers and your uh, your airbag light comes on, it counts as a person. I'm sorry. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's what's the what is you you know what is KJG during the season? I mean, what what do you do to get yourself hyped up? I mean, what, I mean, what is your daily routine being a professional football player? Uh, so. I'll wake up in the morning, probably about like six or so, and maybe grab like a granola bar or something, head to the facility, get a quick lift or get treatment if I need to, hot tub, cold tub, whatever, and then get some breakfast, look at the install, just, and then just relax, like say what's up to the guys, relax until meetings. And then obviously meetings until practice, after practice, again, might lift again, depending on the day or get treatment, depending 
uh, go home, watch the film from practice, take a nap maybe, uh, play some video games, (laughs) (laughs) watch some Netflix, and then figure out dinner, maybe watch some more film and see if there's the install for tomorrow. And yeah. Call okay. it a night. <laughs> okay, you can now. You'll have to get. You'll have to excuse. What is install? Install is just uh, the plays for the next day. Okay, okay, okay. I had not heard that term before, so we we, we learned something new. Eh, yeah, it's like absolutely. <laughs> yeah, just installing it, I guess. <laughs> okay. Into the offense. Okay. Uh, um, See, we're just used to installing ourselves in our seats every game day. That's about <laughs> it. So. Yeah, it's, it's a different kind of install. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it, have you always been a, a film guy, or was it something that you had to learn coming over from U Sport? Definitely had to learn it. I cannot lie on that. That was one of the main things I realized in my first year that the amount of film you have to see just to, you have to see yourself, and what, what you put on film is your resume. So if you're not really checking what you what you've done or how you can improve, you just keeping yourself behind mm-hmm. are you are you hard on yourself when it comes to you watching fil- yourself on film yeah i would say so yeah i get my, i get annoyed at myself a lot <laughs> okay you find there are certain routes that you you run that you prefer running over others or is there is it just a certain style that uh, you've got that makes kgg what he is uh i've really been like between 2021 and like now like i've just been really just trying to diversify my route running because at the end of the day like i'm not going to be as athletic forever, but a good route runner can last a long time, you know? So it's just nitpicking the little things. Okay. And, and of course, working on the speed. I mean, that that has got to be paramount. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Ni- ni- nitro. Always... Nitro. Nitro. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Nitro. <laughs> <laughs> nitro uh, is key. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, is there, I know Cliff's talking about routes and stuff. I mean, is there any particular part of being uh, you know getting yourself ready and stuff like that that you enjoy the most because you're talking you, you know you're talking about hot t- uh, you know hot tubs and the cold tubs and i can i can only i've never been in one kjg but i can only imagine what the cold tubs are like especially if you after a workout i know they're soothing they're supposed yeah. to be but man supposed to be man I, no, yeah, I, yeah, yeah there are certain <laughs> parts of your body it's i'm a, sure very that, much yeah it's like oh <laughs> It's a love hate. It's a love hate. It's a love, love hate relationship. You go in there and you just start like I feel like I'm hyperventilating, <laughs> and then Ooh. like the time's just going slower. Okay. When you want to do like a contrast, like oftentimes I might spend a little bit more time in the hot tub. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And now the ice tub. And now when it comes to the ice tub, I mean, is there usually per, is it per person to a, a, a set limit you ha- that you're supposed to do or that you want to do, or is it just pertaining to what you've done that current day? You know what what your body feels like, etc. Yeah, just for training to the day, like, if my body feels, like, super sore, like, through training camp, like, I feel like the lactic acid build up, I'll do, like, a nice contrast bath, like, like two minutes in the cold tub, two minutes in the hot tub, and end on cold, like, you just keep alternating. Okay. So, you've been in Montreal for, for a, a, you know, a couple of years now. Um, what, what, what have you noticed specifically about the city that you like, uh, you, you know, when you're here in Montreal? I mean, is it, uh, is that, well, can I say nightlife? I'm sure you have a life outside of football, obviously, but I mean, it's, what, what, what really uh, draws you to the city of Montreal when you're here during the season? Uh, just the overall vibe of the city is just really nice. Like, not even nightlife, is just a lot of, like, activities, like, during the day, like, in the summer to do. Like the jazz festival, I like to do go to that, and like I really like the food in Montreal too. <laughs> <laughs> Got any particular spots? Very, that... My favorite restaurant in Montreal would be La Avenue. La Avenue, the, okay, like okay. Breakfast. Yeah, oh, great breakfast joint, absolutely. Yeah, are you a <laughs> are you a Putsin guy? Yeah, yeah, All but right. I also haven't been to I haven't been to many uh, Putin spots. So like a lot of my friends would tell me to go to La Ban- Banquise. La Banquise, yes. That is that is yeah, the yeah. spot to go. Well, yeah, I haven't tried it yet. It's just crazy to me. I need to. I'm going to this year for sure. <laughs> well, listen. Well, if, if we have to help you with that, we will KJG because uh, yeah, it's definitely something you have is it to. That good? It, it really is. I mean, it, I mean, listen. There's a lot of great places to get it puts in, in in Montreal, and there's a lot of really bad places too. I oh mean, yeah. Essentially, all the fast food well, what's, places. What's your top three? What's your top uh, three poutine places? Uh, what do you Lab- guys know on here? Okay, La Banquise, one hundred percent. I mean, a lot of people will say it's cliche, but I mean, the selection is fantastic. I mean, think about this. Put it this way: they got a bible essentially of puts in. Like you're talking about like forty different puts ins that you can choose from, and yeah, I, pretty I much saw it on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like if you can think of it, chances are you'll find a puts in made of it there at La Banquise. Uh, Putsinville is very good as well. Yep, yep. 
And uh, actually, there's a, a chicken place, actually, that makes a, a really awesome puts in as well with uh, rotisserie chicken on it. Uh, Cote Luke Barbecue, their puts in really? is very solid. Uh, there's also a small place uh, like just on the on the outskirts of Montreal. I can you know definitely tell you about it as well. And like, because I went to Sage up there or uh, uh, I guess it would be uh, junior, junior college, college for yeah. junior college there. Their yeah. puts in is outstanding. Just absolutely outstanding. It's a bit of a bit of a hike. But I mean, for my money like that place to me it will always be my all-time favorite but uh, definitely love Bankies, uh puts inville and uh coat st luke barbecue are definitely three places that i would definitely steer people towards if i'm going to be recommending puts into anybody that was the price you said coat st luke barbecue yeah because yeah, for me yeah because stay dude just stay away from the really the fast food places like you cannot get a good put in at mcdonald's you cannot get a put a good put in oh no no yeah no, no. but to be honest and i think cliff might agree with me if there was I don't know. Yes, it is a fast food place, but it would be like a, a guilty pleasure because they actually do a very good puts in. And I think it depends on which one, though, Cliff, I think you'll agree with me, is is La Belle Provence because they, they do have a pretty yeah. good fast food puts in. Um, but as I said, there, there are better. Depends on what you want and how much you want to spend because some of these things can just be absolutely astronomical. Yeah. Uh, I would agree yeah. with because like the different locations of La Belle Provence is very key too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's sometimes true. Like, There's get a food scene from there. It would be good, and the other times not so great. Yeah, it's hit or miss with a, a lot of their locations. That's why I'm I'm Tim's right. Like it's not a bad puts in, but at the same time, it's not someone like if I, if I wanted to introduce someone to it. Yeah, I wouldn't put, I wouldn't start there. Put it that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. for sure. For, for sure. sure. Um, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, you're about to say something. Uh, I was going to say. Uh, Talk to us about the relationship you've had with the other national receivers like Herjie Mayala and uh, Tyson Philpot, who's had an outstanding uh, rookie campaign. Uh, the fact that you three national receivers have gotten so much attention this year, this past season. Talk to us about that relationship. Talk to us about how you, the three of you have come together, basically, and almost become like a, like a mini Canadian Air Force, if you will. Yeah, we no, we're, we're a pretty tight knit group. I talk to Tyson all the time, Herjie too, and especially like coming in, we just wanted to prove that we can do a lot more than just play the far far wide receiver side like strong side receiver sorry yeah because uh i mean the three of you the one thing the one common denominator between you three besides the fact you're canadian is you're all deep threats i mean that's yeah right but i mean when we talked about like we talked about your route running and just the ability to get open like that's something that tyson too has has shown this year as well and herji i mean like i can't i've lost count how many times you you think the play is over and then all of a sudden trevor finds herji 20 30 yards downfield out of nowhere and yeah uh, it's incredible just the way you guys get open and just have that sort of spatial awareness of of the football field yeah no i I definitely agree it's just and like I felt like with us, we all just agreed. It's just a matter of getting the opportunity and getting put in the right position to highlight our skill set. Yeah, and it, it and it's truly amazing, Kayon, because for years in Montreal, like the national receiver position was like the redheaded stepchild of the team. Like just no love at all. Like just you barely even yeah. knew there was a, a a national receiver. And now we've got not one, not two, but three mm-hmm. outstanding national receivers. I mean, that is it's mind blowing and. Believe yeah. we are here I'm for changing. it. <laughs> exactly, it's fantastic. You know, I am here for it too. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, that's right. You are for the next two years at least. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Obviously, we, you know, it's such a great 2022 campaign. It wasn't where we expected it to, to end. Obviously, you know, we, you know, Cliff and I were there in Toronto, you know, cheering the team on uh, at the Eastern Final. Um, when you're looking at forward, looking forward to 2023. Um, what, you know, not only for yourself, but for the team, what, what, what goals would you like to have? I mean, it seems like a silly question to ask, but what, do you have any goals for 2023? Uh, for myself or for the team? Uh, whichever you want, whichever. Well, obviously I think the, the, you know, the ultimate goal is the gray cup, obviously, but, but, yeah, but so for that, Yeah, that's, of course. <laughs> yeah, but, but for you, I mean, for myself, do, I yeah, want- it, do you, do you concentrate on stats? Do you concentrate on how many catches you have? Do you concentrate? Are you that type of guy or is it? For just for twenty twenty three, you know, wh- wh- whatever you're looking at, for. Uh, I don't, I don't really concentrate too much on stats. I would more so like I was talking to Joey about this, like last year coming to the season, like I really want to have like a high yards after catch or average catch. So that's because as a receiver, you can't really control how many times you get the ball, but it's like what you do with the ball, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. But knowing that I got five hundred yards or so last year, and that was basically off of majority short routes and then the odd deep ball i feel like i can get a thousand yards get put in the right position 
like more intermediate and deep balls. <laughs> so that's probably one of my goals. But even like a average catch, yards per catch would be like, I don't know, like 16 would be cool for me. It would be a cool average. Got to build up the yak. I like it. Yeah, exactly. Yak. So me and, me and Tyson, we, we call it Yak Boys. <laughs> the Yak Boys. All right. That's it. Done deal. Because uh, I don't know if you noticed it or not, but uh, I think it was either the CFL's Twitter account or the Alouette's Twitter account was posted a photo of uh, you and Tyson. And like, what do we call this iconic Canadian duo? I'm like, now we know. Yeah. Yak bros. <laughs> yeah. Yak bros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yak bros or yak boys. Either or. Or yak boys. Yeah. I think oh, no, sorry, actually, my, uh, me, uh, Mike was actually telling me, he's like, for, for yards after catch per catch, me and Tyson were number one and two. <laughs> So there you go. It's, oh, yeah. yeah. Like a glove, man. This fits. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So we got to come up with something. So if you're Nitro, KJG, what do we call Tyson? Uh, turbo. <laughs> there turbo there we go. Nitro and Turbo. Know. The Yak Bros. All right. Come up with. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll work on yeah, it. We, make, we, make, sure you're, make sure you're writing all this stuff down. Just, just spitballing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we're coming no, no, up no, with the Canadian version of American Gladiators. <laughs> Canadian version of American Gladiators. <laughs> 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 all right okay on this this has been an absolute blast but uh obviously we, we don't know we can't control what's going to happen as far as what the elements the rest of what the elements do for the rest of this off season but uh we know for sure that you're going to be a, a member of this organization for the next two years that fills us with so much yep. joy knowing that we're going to be seeing you this coming june at training camp wherever it's going to be in Quebec is going to be fantastic as well. What's the one thing you want to tell Alouette's nation just to get, just to help get ready for the season, despite everything that's going on, despite all the noise and everything like that, what would you tell Alouette's nation right now? Just so that they know to get ready for you this coming June. Just to know that we're all working. We're all ready. Keep calm. It'll be all, I'll be good. <laughs> there you go. Keep calm and carry on. I couldn't, I couldn't say it better myself. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Hit us up with your uh, socials, uh, Kayon. Where can we find you on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all that jazz? Uh, all all of my ads are the one-stop shop, Kayon, J-G, K-A-I-O-N-J-G. There you go. Folks, get out there. Support this man. He's he's here for us now. He's a member of Alouette's Nation. My God, Kayon Julian Grant, thank you so much for joining us here on the Alouette's Flight Deck. We appreciate you, and we are so excited to see you this coming June at training camp. Or if you want to come see us looking, sooner, right? Get that puts in. We got you as well. Yo, oh, sounds good to me. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you guys for having me. It's been a blast for sure. I always like starting off this off the year with a player interview. You know, it, 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 whether he just signed, uh, uh, you know, re upped with us or not. You know, having a guy on the on the pod for the very first time and finding finding out about him and you know, to find out what more about what makes him tick gives more insight to the fans. You know, and, and it gets us more even more hyped for the season, even though we're in February. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. And we've, I think we've had a pretty good tradition about uh, having a, a new free agent, free agent acquisition on for one of the first couple of shows. Mm -hmm. And this technically doesn't count, but I mean, he did sign in the free agency period. So, I mean, I guess, I don't know, semantics, I know, but uh, being able to have uh, KGG on was an absolute treat. Uh, definitely outstanding individual uh, on and off the field. Mm -hmm. Uh, like I said, we're just we're just so excited to see what he can do, and knowing that he's back in the nest for the next two seasons, my goodness! Like I like I said, the the potential of this young man is limitless, and I'm so excited to see what he's going to be able to do this year. Uh, I, I definitely think he truly will become a household name this year. So, folks, this is the time to get on get on board the KGG gravy train because uh, going nowhere but up, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, should be it should be fun. You know, that was the, the whole positives, but, you know, obviously there's something else that we have to talk about because... There is a very big elephant in the room. And, and, it, and it, it depends on where you are, whether you're an insider, uh, you know, local media, you know, the fans themselves, you know, I, you know, really the whole thing started with, with Gino Lewis basically saying that he was going to go to free agency. And, you know, Cliff and I learned quite a bit with our evening with Gino when we when we met him for uh, when we met him for dinner about a month ago, um, you know a lot of there there is I wish it's not that you know I wish that there was something that if we could have taped it we would have but there's so much inside information that players do know 
that rarely, rarely gets you know it gets to the light of day. Mm-hmm. And it's not that we're we're not saying oh well we know this and that it's we're not saying that at all. A lot of stuff what Gina was mentioning was very concerning, and and it's just gone on from there, you know. And then it, you know talking to him, him saying he's going to free agency, and then all, all the rumors, uh, you know, during this tamper period of uh, it potentially looks like we're not we're losing not only our current uh, our what is current currently our first string quarterback and Trevor Harris losing our Second string quarterback Dominic Davis to BC, uh, Jake Winicky to to Saskatchewan. Mm-hmm. And by the way, uh, if people remember what we said of the past couple of weeks, and you and you you know us, uh, the last pa- 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 couple of shows, I-, I was the one who said that I think Jake was be going to be one of the wide receivers that we were going to lose. We could not keep everybody. You know, this was thinking that we were going to be able to keep you know potentially keep Gino, right? Because mo- mostly because. Gino's going to get paid. No matter what, Gino Lewis is going to get paid this year, mm-hmm. whether it's by the Alouettes or by one of the other eight CFL teams. Somehow, he's going to make his bread. There's no question about that. And if it was going to be with the Alouettes, then yes, we looked at the current wide receiver core that was under contract and who were also the ones who were potential th- free agents. And as, as you said, Tim, we can't keep everybody. And we just going through the list and just looked more and more like, I got a feeling... Jake is going to be the odd man out, which yep. sucks because, yeah, he's definitely an extremely talented player. Uh, I know he, he had a bit of a slow start last year, but uh, come playoff time, he was he he was TD Jake again. He was coming back into form, and you know, we, this, despite all that, you still think, okay, well, man, I I just don't see how you can keep Jake Winicky and Gino Lewis on the same team, considering what both these guys are worth, and. Lo and behold, it sure looks like, you know, Jake Winicky is going to be heading out to Saskatchewan. And believe me, they're going to get a great football player out of him. But now it's the the whole Geno Lewis thing is, where is he going to go? Is he going to stay and get overpaid? Is he going to go somewhere else and get overpaid? I mean, no matter what, he is definitely getting an increase in salary. There is absolutely no question about that as far as I'm concerned. It's now just a matter of where. Yeah. Who, who who's going to pony up for him and where is he going to go? Because he had, he was very disenfranchised, shall we say, mm-hmm. with the current state of affairs here in Montreal, mm-hmm. going so far as to call it a shit show. And it's kind of hard to disagree with him when he says that, because let's take a look at things, Tim. Uh, since our last show, uh, the Alouettes no longer have Mario Cicchini as their president. Yeah. Uh, who, who's the new president? Currently don't have don't one, know. Cliff. <laughs> TBA, to be announced, or TBD, to be determined, or something. And why was he let go? Because reasons, I guess. You know, like Rumored uh, clash, potential uh, clash with, with minority owner, uh, you know, Gary Stern. Right. And by the way, just, just as, as a quick note to what we were saying about if the Alouettes do not have an officially named president, Cliff, it will be the first time since 2012 and 2013 where we do not have an officially named president. All this to say, though, that given given the current structure of things right now, uh, it's it's caused a lot of wondering by guys like Gino Lewis, Trevor Harris, and so on, to the point where now it seems like with so much uncertainty as to what's going on with this team – and how the uh, the the ownership structure and just basically the the whole front office aspect of things, with all of these things all of a sudden up in the air. Now the the, the question comes down to, well, do I really want to be here and have to deal with all of this? You know, especially these guys just want to play football. Yeah, and and they want to be paid handsomely. Like they want to be paid what they're worth, which anyone worth their salt is going to want that. Now though, there's just so much stuff is up in the air as far as how this team is. And there's there's no answers. And even more troubling is there's literally nothing coming from the ownership front. Uh, we know uh, to the point now where it's been reported that the Alouettes aren't even talking to any of these potential free agents during the uh, the tampering window because they don't know if they can make any deals without a president, uh, without approval from the ownership group, without like it. It, it really feels like Danny Machocha can't make any moves, which is troublesome to say the least. I mean, never mind just trying to sign guys that we want on this team, but to go out and try to make improvements as needed, and you can't apparently can't do that, which makes absolutely no sense. I, and I don't know where it's come from. You know, you know, 
you know, it was, I guess, made by uh, Randy and Brosey made it sound as if, you know, it was, you know, the, the, these guys were the, you know, uh, the new ownership group was, you know, uh, the, they were the, the cowboys, you know, in the white hats riding into town, going to save the team and everything like that, which they did do, you know, the CFL was able to take them off their plate. Um, you know, obviously there were some, some things did happen and, you know, Sid Spiegel passing away and it being put under the, uh, uh, you know, the, the look of the estate. I just don't, where's it gone? You know, you still have a, a minority owner who owns 25% of the team who technically has been the face because nobody else is speaking up. And I don't know where this money is gone. Why all of a sudden is there an issue? Now we can speculate, you know, first of all, by the way, first and foremost, uh, it, it, the problem with this now, Cliff, is that you look at our, our, our if you look at the, our lists of, of a current free agents that are left. There are some huge names on that list. Huge names on that list, you know. Now we're going to be potentially having another starting quarter, uh, another "quote unquote" new starting quarterback. I mean, we do, ha- you know, we, we've seen some promise in, uh, in in Davis Alexander, some very good promise. But you know, a second year quarterback. Um, the problem is that with all this garbage that's occurring, you know, talks of folding and talks of this is the, you know, this is the, the lowest point in team history that people have seen. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a fire sale. First and foremost, by the way, you, it cannot be a fire sale when it's free agency because with fire sales, a la the expos in 94, off season 94, at least they got something for the players that they traded away. Uh-huh. You know, a good word has been pilfering. That's a good word. But the problem is, though, it's trickling down the fans. And if you see the ones that are very, that are vocal, and a lot of them have been, and a lot of them listen to this show, they're just up in arms. You can, it does not look good when you're trying to come off a very successful season, you know, you know, what one person that they would consider one of the best presidents that the league has had, you know, how, you know, how, how. Uh, how open he was and how genuine he was and and now this you're gonna start you know and all this occurs after people have start have already paid for the tickets or or were waiting for a reason to come back Mm -hmm. and and you don't want that as a franchise you know is this one of the darkest periods of of the team history no do people not remember jim sparrows and michael gale fan you know team could have been here as, as gone as quickly as it came in 96 do people not remember what happened with Norm Kimball in 86? You don't even have to go back that far. How about Andrew Wettenhall and Cavis Reed? Like, I'm, I'm sorry, and I, I like Cavis, but at the same time, he was thrust into a, a terrible position. Uh, Andrew Wettenhall wanted to show that he could run a football team. And meanwhile, I wouldn't trust this guy to take care of a house plant, never mind a professional franchise. Mm. And it, all, all it came down to, like, just horrible mismanagement questionable decisions there i would consider the, that a lot darker than what we have now i mean what's what's happening now is not ideal i just want to stretch the imagination yeah and i just want to know where all the rumors are coming from i really do because you know uh, by the way i'm also putting this cfl in 2019 as, as one of the worst owners that the team has ever had i'm sorry huh. Huh. Yeah. because why is there so why is everything so quiet you know there were things that that popped out in, in french media you know certain hints and, and maybe in in your window that uh that mario Ciccini may have said um you know is there is this team for sale you know is this trying to happen i we don't know and maybe this time around commissioner ambrosi which in itself you know needs to keep, really keep his fingers out of this stuff with the, with the ownership, let it just, <laughs> let it just, if it's going to occur, let it occur because it, you know, we need, we need some positivity back with this team. You know, even the threat of potentially losing this team again, if we lose a team, if, we, if the Alouettes go, they're done. CFL will never return to the city of Montreal. No. And I'll be done too. I can promise you that. A, and, and a lot of people will. That's what I'm saying. A lot of the, a lot of the people that the people whose disposable income you crave so desperately is going to be gone because there's a crap ton of other things to do to entertain yourself. You know what? Hey, I'm an NFL fan too. You know, I can just as easily go into that full bore. Mm-hmm. Uh, these new leagues that are popping up. I'm saying hey, recently I, with me, I had a revival all of a sudden. For example, I mean, I, I, the point is there's, there's, there's no shortage of ways to consume football. It doesn't have to be Canadian. And you know what? Just because, you know, you and I are, are both Canadian-born people. Doesn't mean that we have to pledge allegiance to the CFL 
as a whole. I mean, if if you're just gonna do us dirty like this as supporters, and that's the thing. This this is something else I, I, I want to say right off the bat. I do not want to be referred to as a fan of the Alouettes or the Canadian Football League because I'm not a fan of what's going on right now. I'm not a fan of the direction that this is going in. And by the way, that direction is swirling. The drain is it's swirling down the drain. I'm not a fan of that. So with respect, I am a supporter of this football team. I am a supporter of this league. I support them financially. I support them emotionally and physically by showing up for these games and showing up for these events and showing up for anything to do with this league because I believe in it and I want it to succeed. I believe in the Alouettes and I want them to succeed. But if you're just going to keep flinging poo in my face, then no, I'm going to take my ball and go home. And you know what? I'm not the only one. There's a whole lot of people here in Montreal that love the Alouettes and love the Canadian Football League. But you know what? If you're just going to treat them as an afterthought, guess what? They're going to treat you like an afterthought as well. There is more than enough things to do in this city, in this province, in this country, hell, in this world, besides paying attention to the Canadian Football League. If you're going to insult your paying paying public, then you're going to get what you're going to get, which Mm -hmm. is sweet f*** all. Yeah, and you have fans who've said they're not spending another dime. W- could you blame them? No. I mean, qu- quite frankly, and you know, maybe that's the thing that's going to wake up uh, Mr. Stern over there, you know, living in his little la la land, is that maybe maybe that's what it's going to take is for everybody to put a stop payment on their season ticket holder plan. Maybe demand, you know what? You, you can't promise me a football team. You can't promise me. You sold me season tickets based on what happened in 2022, and I'm not getting that. I want my money back. I, I don't want to. I'm out. I don't. I, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot. Of, and you know what? Maybe that's what's going to take for him and for 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 Stern and for Ambrosi and everybody else involved in the Alouettes and the Canadian Football League to wake up and realize, hey, <laughs> you know, this team was sold. The fans of this franchise, the, the investors, if you will, of this franchise, were just sold a bill of goods, and they don't like it. And you better do something about it. Whether it's finding new owners, finding local ownership, and you know, throwing this. Uh, ownership group out the door or you know what hell you, you if you want a team in the, the maritime so bloody bad why don't you tell stern and his ownership group to go set up shop there find quebec investors that will actually care about the alouettes and want them to do well and grow as this province has with with football as as a as a source here not just in the cfl but uh, on the college level and everywhere else football people here in quebec love football they love the alouettes but you're making it so hard not to love them and that is beyond sad it is tragic even so if you can't get your shit together and figure it out find someone who will and take your crap and get the hell out of here yeah again it's just like where's all i I just don't I, I just don't know where it's coming from. We, we've gone from, you know, I understand everybody, everybody is being quiet. And I, I said, I, I'm, I'm hoping that it's because they are, there's something to do with the new ownership group. Uh, and if that, and you know, what, if that's, if, if that's really what it comes down to is the, 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 the need or want to install new, hopefully local ownership. Fine. But tell us something like, or this, tell the player something because come the 14th, you know, Gino, Gino go somewhere else. Where he's going to get paid? We lose Reggie White Jr. We lo- and on and on and on. But Trevor, you know, I, again, yeah, yes, I understand the, the the we had our issues, but still, he's still our starting quarterback. We lose our second string quarterback. We now need two others. Yes, there are others out there. There are other wide receivers out there. You know, big name wide receivers. But it's it's like we're starting from scratch again. And he, and here's the thing. Even if you were to go out in free agency and sign what would essentially be the 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 table scraps, if you will, like the the the, the guys that weren't good enough to go play for those other teams, you still gonna have to pay them. I mean, if, if they're willing to come here and play for pennies on the dollar, I mean, I guess that's something. But then you're basically putting out a, a, a substandard product, but you're still charging fans based on the promise of seeing a Geno Lewis and to a lesser extent, a Trevor Harris and so on. So that team in 2022, which for all its trials and tribulations ended up being a pretty damn good team. One game removed from going to the great cup and potentially winning it. That's the team that we were sold for 2023 essentially. Yeah. And instead you're going to give us like this uh, bargain basement nonsense. The, 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 the clearance rack, if you will, of, uh, of the Canadian football league. Guys that you know think might be good enough, you know, but uh, essentially they I, weren't good. Enough, they weren't good enough to play for their original team. So you know now you're going to get to sign these guys and hope it works out. 
Yeah, no, I don't. No. I don't. I've always and everybody knows me. You know this too, Cliff. I I, I deplore. I deplore games. What I what what I consider preseason games during the regular season. I don't want to spend the money that I have for an entire season of quote unquote preseason. You know, you can have faith in your team. You can. You know, we can only take so much, and it, and it's just it's just frustrating. I hope hope that the day after we were that this pod comes out that we'll be able to something positive will come out. You know, Whoa. and what's funny too, Cliff, is that of all these players that have agreed to contracts so far uh, that's been reported, one of them isn't Gino. So I guess there's some positivity. I mean, you look what's happening in BC. You know, Dom Davis is going there. You got. You know, VA, who was already up, which if he had not been traded, was going to be, could have been our quarterback this year. He's been re upped in BC. All the best, obviously, to, to VA. You, you know what makes me laugh is, yeah, it, I can't help but think of VA. This time last year, he was the man here in Montreal. He was going to be the guy. And then they signed Trevor Harris for pennies on the dollar. And they get they sell it to us as, well, hey, you're getting a, a top caliber CFL quarterback at a, a, a bargain rate. I'm like, hmm. Well, 2021 wasn't exactly the best way to showcase Trevor's abilities, but hey, he came into camp. He did what he had to do. Uh, obviously, Danny Machocha didn't have very much faith in uh, Kahari Jones and Vernon Adams, so both those guys had to go to make sure that Trevor Harris was the man. Like they, Danny Machocha did everything possible to make sure that this was Trevor Harris's franchise. And the first chance he got, Trevor Harris just said, "You know what? I, I yeah, I appreciate it, but." I, I got to go where I can get paid and also know that I'm going to be playing in a, you know, you know, uh, not a shit show. <laughs> so, so I can't fault Trevor for that. But man, imagine you put all those your eggs in that basket mm -hmm. and look what happens. I mean, let's not let's not forget Jason Moss apparently was hired as head coach for the Alouettes to work with Trevor Harris because they thought that those two would work well together. Now what? Yeah. Uh, is there any guarantee that uh, the next quarterback that the Alouettes have, whether it's D Davis Alexander or whomever they bring in in free agency, are they going to be able Fr to work? Funny, Cody Fajardo, Dane Evans. I mean, the Cody Fajardo one makes me laugh. Like, I mean, the big knock on Jason Moss and Cody Fajardo was, okay, well, yeah, it didn't work out over there. They had a terrible year last year in Saskatchewan, but they had no O-line. Now, Montreal does have an O-line, but I, it almost feels like an experiment. Like, well, let's see if that's true. Let's see if it's true that the real reason why Saskatchewan sucked out loud last year was because they had a terrible O-line. Maybe Cody Fajardo really is that good of a quarterback. Maybe Jason Moss really is a good play caller and knows what he's doing. And that's really what the problem was. thing is, though, I don't want to pay for that experiment. I like if, if that's a simulation, like can't you like like simulate a Madden game or some shit like to, to, to figure that part out? Like, do we really have to sit and pay as, as as supporters of this franchise to see if Jason Moss and Cody Fajardo could actually work on the same page with a much better O-line? Because arguably the Al the Alouettes O-line is worlds better than whatever they had out in Saskatchewan. I can I'll, I will definitely say that. I just I just don't know if that's a risk I really want to take, considering what we've what we know of Cody Fajardo and Dane Evans, who technically still is under contract with the uh, with the T Tiger Cats, but now with uh, Bo Levi Mitchell signing a contract with them, and Matthew Schultz also re-upping there, mm -hmm. uh, can't afford all those guys. So obviously Dane Evans is going to be showing the door one way or another, and potentially could come to Montreal because that. Where the coaching or the 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 quarterback carousel is going to basically land is here here in Montreal because as you said as, as 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 it's very possible that as of next Tuesday the first string and second string quarterback are going to play elsewhere and Davis Alexander I definitely think has a lot of potential but he's still raw he still has a ways to go and I mean yes we do see it where a, a no name quarterback comes out of nowhere and. Blows the doors off of everybody. Hello, Brock Purdy. <laughs> but I'm I'm sorry to say, I mean, that's a lot of pressure to put on anyone, let alone a Davis Alexander, who I still think, if given the right opportunity, and if Anthony Calvillo is willing to work with him and help make him a great quarterback, I definitely think there's a lot of potential there. That being said, I'm not going to hand him the keys to the kingdom just yet. I mean, I, I want a quarterback that has CFL experience, like a a fair bit of CFL experience and can win games in this league. Can that be Cody Fajardo? Could that be Dane Evans? Could that be somebody else? I mean, these are, these are questions that shouldn't have have been asked. I mean, I mean, it, it boggles the mind that we have gotten to this point and for no good reason. That's the thing that bothers me more than anything else is there is no 
good reason it should have come to this point. No, I agree. I, I, again, we just don't just it's, after it, it is, it's Jerry just been, Stern and Alouettes. It, it's just crickets. Please to let us know. Crickets. That's all that is. It's been crickets. Very loud crickets. I mean, silence is deafening. I mean, this silence is beyond deafening. Uh, I mean, we we can only assume that it, maybe Gary's not saying anything because the you know uh, the the majority of partners have just been saying shush. Um, is Randy Ambrosi in, in, in involved in this potential new ownership negotiations? If that's what the case is, I don't know. But, right but, now, but, but considering how well. He did last time, since the dripping sarcasm there, Cliff. Um, I, I don't know if I want him involved. No, considering, like, I'm sorry to say, I mean, he's a nice guy. He he really is a nice guy, Randy Ambrosi. But there is nothing that I've seen so far that shows that he knows what the hell he's doing when it comes to situations like this. I, I mean, I mean, the, the whole, when this team was up for sale, like when the league was owning this team in 2019, which incidentally <laughs> was one of the better years. I know. Like. We're, 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 we are approaching now, Tim, a decade now of when the Alouettes started to dovetail from the Mark Tressman era. Like it was 10 years ago this month, I think it was, where Mark Tressman became the head coach of the Chicago Bears. And it didn't feel like it at the time, but that's when the slow descent into where we are now started, as far as I'm concerned. I just can't help, I just can't help but feel there's a lot of that again. And I'm not the only one feeling that way. And that should be troubling. People from Randy Ambrosi down, everybody should be panicked that Alouette's fans and supporters and what have you are feeling that way. And this distrust, this this malaise, whatever you want to call it, that's just sort of surrounding the team all of a sudden. Like, that didn't just happen overnight. Like, this has been festering for a while. And it, now— Yeah, it's, it's something. And, and now not wanting to spend money, if that's the case? Doesn't spend make- money for what, too? This is another thing I don't understand. Like, the TSN contract essentially pays for the salary cap, which you have to spend. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I I just don't get it. <clears throat> it's- I don't know, dude. And, and, and I know there's only so much that we can rehash and, and stuff like that. And well, <sighs> I mean, like, you think about this. Like, we're in the, the, the tampering window right now. Like, a preview show of to who do you think the Alouette should go get? I'm like, doesn't freaking matter who the Alouette should go get at this point. It, it's now becoming who are the Alouettes going to lose and who have they lost? Mm-hmm. Like, and we don't even know who's going to be replacing with. We can't even, it seems like we can't even think about that. I mean, it just feels like, as I said, we're going to be stuck with like the scrap heap, you know, to, to pilfer through that in hopes that we find something that's not completely terrible, but it shouldn't be that. This is a team, let's not forget, was in the Eastern Final, came this close to going to the Great Cup. Mm-hmm. And now, uh, you know, you, you, you'd think this was an expansion team. You'd think this was the Atlantic Schooners, you know, come to life. And, you know, let's let, let's put together this team with, uh, you know, Band-Aids and a prayer. Like, it shouldn't be that. Yeah. It's like Alouette's fans have they, suffered they, for the past <laughs> 10 years of this ineptitude and just – it's mind-boggling to think it's even come to this. And just when you start getting ahead just a little bit, like in 2019, when they got their shit figured out, and you thought, oh, my God, okay, we're on to something here. And, okay, we found we found owners. We found people that are with deep pockets that are going to come along. And, you know, as you know, you've mentioned before, it kind of be the Cowboys riding in on the white, with the white hat on to save the city and save this franchise and make sure that it's okay for years to come to this. Like, now we have arrived at this point where everything is just so damn murky that we just don't know what the heck is yeah. going on. And, they, and I think the problem is, too— is that this is something that the team is going to be have to be have to be uh, trying to fix? They they're going to piss off people. They're going to piss off advertisers. You know they're gonna they're gonna piss off season ticket holder potential fans. They're going to have to go into you know fix mode unless they get this dealt with now. You know trust. You got to get trust back. You know I I wish nothing but the best of the team. I want them to draw. I want them to sell out Percival Molson. But you can't do this. You gotta show, show that you're trying. And you know what? I can be the eternal optimist and say, as of next, as of the fourteenth, we're gonna get a, get some announcements and saying that this, you know, we get three quarters of our other people back. You know, Gina will be back. He, he and he brings in Greg Allingson, you know, as an example to come come and join us. You know, and we have a a head head to head for the number one, you know, number one spot between Dane Evans and Cody Fajardo. Mm. You know, to, and to throw throw in Davis Alexander in there too, man. 
So it's, we're, we're, we're only, you know, we're not even past, we're not even into free agency and we're already at this point. So again, there's, we, we could rehash until we're blue in the face, Cliff. Mm. Obviously we are going to, we will do shows when it is necessary. Hopefully we have some, some very good news will be coming up very shortly. That That's all that we want. And if we have to do a show in, you know, earlier than the two to three week period, then that's what we'll do just to keep you oh, up to date. And- hey, and maybe do a live show. Get your get your butt over here, or me get over there, and we'll figure something out and do a do a live stream. Yeah, and I mean, listen, there's we, we like I said, we 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 always got the the hamster wheel turning, folks. We we've got ideas we want to get in into place for you, and we want to make it happen. And yeah, that's the thing with this show. I mean, we <laughs> we obviously want this football team to succeed. We want the best for it. Mm. And we want to be able to come on here and tell you guys about the amazing moves the Alouettes made. We want to now be able to – now we're just hoping that we can come on and say, hey, they got their shit figured out. They got – you know, we, we, whether it's new owners or the owners that are currently in place pull their heads out of their ass and figure themselves out. We want to be able to announce that. We want to be able to talk about good stuff. We want to be able to get people excited like, oh, man, the Alouettes are back. The Alouettes are doing things. They, the Alouettes are on the right path. That's all we really want. And the fact that it came to this is troubling, to say the least. But and there's no easy fix. That's the unfortunate part is there's no easy fix, especially with all the circumstances that are surrounding this entire situation. All we can really hope for, though, is they realize it and they take the steps to correct it. They have to. I mean, there, there's just no other way. There's, a, there's I, I'm tired of hearing the doom and gloom. I'm tired of every time the Elwets get something nice, it gets snatched away. And then, you know shove their face in the dirt again it it's frustrating and you wonder why people don't care about the cfl you wonder why people don't care about the alouettes well that's why you don't give them a reason to care that's why they don't care you give them a reason to cheer you give them a reason to be excited they will be that's really what it comes down to more than anything else and i sincerely hope you know starting at randy ambrosi starting at gary stern starting at this ownership group i don't care it's got to start at the top and work its way down simple as that mm-hmm. i agree we appreciate everybody all of you who have been with us up into this point for our eighth season premiere it's just the beginning it's just the beginning and uh hey if you have any comments questions concerns you can email me at tim.capper at alouettesflightdick.ca or you can email cliff at cliffyd.pine at alouettesflightdick.ca let us know what you think who should we have on this season what are your thoughts on on what, we, what we've been talking about? Do you agree? Do you disagree? You want to hear what you have to think. Yeah, Man. hit us up on the socials and uh, let's talk about it because let's face it, folks. There's a lot to go through. There's a lot to discuss. There's a lot to sift through. And we want you as part of the conversation as well. So definitely hit us up. We, you know, we may not have the answers, but we're going to certainly try. We're going to certainly try to make sense of all of this craziness and God willing, we're going to be able to come out of this in the end and be okay again. Exactly. So, well, we'll see you next time. Again, keep uh, keep uh, looking for us on social and uh, up to date on, on our schedule. So, for everybody here at the Elwood Slight Dick, for Cliffy D, I'm Tim Capper. Run Final Approach.